Hi hey everyone and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be doing another candle review of products sent in to me by one of you. If this is your first time here uh, to this channel, then I appreciate you for stopping by. My name is Wade Thomas. I'm the owner of Black Tie Barn Candle Company. Uh, here on this channel, we do a lot of candle reviews. We uh, talk about candle making as well as running a candle business and other related products as well. If you are interested in any other future content, we cover a lot of different topics on this channel or at least a lot of different topics related to the uh, handcrafted industry on this channel. And if any of that appeals to you, then I would encourage you to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you don't mind as well. It helps out the channel, but it also helps to ensure that you don't miss out on any future videos. So once again, I really appreciate you all for being here. Let's go ahead and talk about today's candle review. So as I mentioned, this review is of a package sent to me by one of you subscribers again, and the company is Goddess Scent Design. Now, if this is the first review you've seen on this channel, um, just let me remind everyone that uh, these are sent in voluntarily, of course, and the whole idea of doing these reviews is for somewhat entertaining purposes, but also informational purposes to provide some feedback to any of you that uh, would like any from another candle maker. Um, but again, this is meant to be positive and constructive and, and hopefully, you know, provide some little tips and things uh, along the way as well. If you are interested in checking out any more of these candle review videos, I do have an entire playlist for these reviews to feel free to check out. And if anyone else is interested in sending in their products to have it unboxed and reviewed on the channel, just let me know in the comments. I'll reach out to you and we will go from there. The way these reviews work, is we're gonna start off by unboxing and checking out the packaging, the presentation, talk about the labeling, take a look at the wax, the wick, maybe make some uh, guesses on what I think the wax and wick could be if I'm not uh, told what they are. And then of course talk about the fragrances. And then I will step away for a week or two, do some testing on these products. And then uh, in this same video, I'll let you know how that testing went. We'll talk about wicking, we'll talk about hot throw and overall performance. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Let's go ahead and dive into today's review. Now, as I mentioned, this is from Goddess Scent Design. So I have opened up the package so far, but I haven't gone any further than that. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. So we've got a, looks like a letter and a couple cards here. I'm gonna go ahead and take everything out of the box and uh, it'll make it a little easier to, uh, <laughs> to go from there. This is fun. We got matchsticks here. Really got a lot here, still more. All right, I think I got it all. Okay, so we are definitely got a few different products here. And I'm gonna open up the letter before we go any further, just because the letter tells us a little bit about the company and the type of products we're gonna be dealing with usually, although I haven't actually read this one yet, so I might be wrong. But um, I did notice some heft, some weight to uh, a few of these candles. So I'm sure that might be mentioned uh, here in the letter. So let's go ahead and start with that. Don't generally read these out loud just in case there's anything in there they don't want me to share necessarily. So let me skim it real quick and then I'll kind of summarize it for you. Looks like it's a husband wife team um, and they really got into candle making during the pandemic uh, to kind of stabilize uh, their income and stabilize their uh, their lifestyle. They also were spending a lot of time away from the children so they wanted to do something they could do also at home uh, for additional revenue stream. And so that, that really falls in line with a lot of the reasons that people start a side business or a side income. One of the challenges that they talked about was trying to find the right jar for them. And so instead of uh, continuing to try to go down that path, they ended up doing some of their own custom jars. And that is what I was referring to here with these candles that are quite heavy. Based off the weight of them and uh, what I can barely see of them, I'm assuming these are concrete candles. I believe they made their own concrete vessels here. I'm anxious to take a look at these. And then they made um, a couple of these other candles here, which is more of their standard uh, collection. They have a variety of different options here. So they have some that are more custom and fit a specific decor. They have others that are more in the kind of affordable economical line. We're gonna quickly run through all of these and then, uh, and then we'll go from there. But before we get started on that, I just wanted to mention they also provided their business card. It's actually more of a, just a small kind of thank you card, a branded thank you card, which is always a nice little touch. We also have a candle care card. So I'm gonna set all of that aside. Now we're gonna go ahead and dig into the actual products. I wanna start with, um, you know what? Let's, let's start with a little 10 first. I'm assuming this is probably a sample size. Uh, actually, yes, it says right on it, soy wax sample. It's a 1.7 ounce. Uh, this one's called Pretty Penny. The one thing is it's a little difficult to read on the label. Um, so if I had to offer a suggestion on this, it would just be to increase the font of some of the information under the name of the fragrance. But this one again is called Pretty Penny. And it looks like it's mostly lavender, something sugar and vanilla. Difficult. Well, maybe. It's quite difficult to get off. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's a screw off, not a pull off. 
I'm smelling mostly mostly lavender, but definitely some sweetness to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this one aside. I actually enjoy that fragrance quite a bit. I, I didn't know if I was gonna enjoy it based off the scent description, but it's actually quite nice. So these next ones are their 11 ounce candles that uh, are really targeted to that good affordable price point. Everything is very nicely packaged individually. And then of course we're uh, then collectively packaged inside a, a uh, box with plenty of packing material. So definitely no concerns with packaging. I can actually smell this one through the jar a little bit. Uh, this one is called Aries Lou, I, I think. Um, it is a mixture of rum, chestnuts, cinnamon, rum, chestnuts, cinnamon, and apple. That's quite interesting. I'm not sure I've actually smelled that fragrance before. Uh, this one does say it's a virgin coconut soy wax. Jar adhesion on these ones, which I know a lot of people really, really care about, um, is, isn't is great, but I think that's more of uh, because of the jar. This is one of those tall, uh, economy mason jars. You can get these at places like SKS Bottling or Fillmore Company, um, where they are your taller mason style jars, but they are an economy style. So you can get them for a cheaper price point, but they are usually thicker glass. And those thicker glass jars can sometimes make it look like you have not good jar adhesion, but it has a nice uniform milky look. It almost looks like a milk bottle. The label itself um, is coming up in a few places, but that's usually a result of just shipping and changes in temperature and humidity. The one thing I'll say before we check this one out is that the letter said they were 11 ounce candles. Um, however, on the uh, on this actual label, it says a 14 ounce candle. So the question is, is whether it's an actual 14 ounce candle or an 11 ounce candle. You want the net weight, which is just the weight of the wax inside. You want to subtract the weight of the jar. So if it is truly 14 ounces in total, you'd want to subtract the weight of the jar, and maybe that's where they're getting 11 ounces worth of candle. Uh, you only want to put the net weight on the label. So that's my only suggestion is to verify if you really are selling a 14 ounce candle or 11, and then make sure it's the net weight of the wax only in the inside that's actually on the label. Let's go ahead and open this one up. Well, that's interesting. It's not the smell I was smelling coming from outside of the jar. So maybe that was something else. Maybe that was my fingers I was smelling from the previous candle. <laughs> I don't know. I really smell mostly rum, cinnamon, and apple, but I bet the chestnut being kind of that, uh, probably a heavy base note, I bet we're gonna start detecting that more once uh, once we're actually burning the candle. But I actually really, really like this fragrance. I don't have this particular type of fragrance in my candle lines at the moment. I've definitely considered adding some that are similar to this, but this one's very, very good. I like the touch of apple. I really like the way the apple's working with the cinnamon and the rum in this. It's very good. This sure seems like a different wax to me than the previous one, the sample. Um, it is softer and it's smoother and silkier. It doesn't have that uh, kind of rough texture that the uh, sample did. So I don't know if they're different waxes, but this one seems like a different wax. Actually, this, the sample said soy wax and this one says coconut soy wax. That would explain the difference. The wick though is the same. I can't figure out exactly what type of wick that is. It's got these really dark paper filaments woven in. So it, it, it looks like what an eco wick or an HTP wick would look like, except for it's the wrong color. So I don't know exactly what type of wick that is, but I'm really curious how it's gonna burn. Like I said, I really love the fragrance. I'm gonna go ahead and open the next one, which is the same type of candle, just a different fragrance. This one is, uh, again, they have the same layout on all of their labels, which is great. Uh, the only thing changing is the name and the color. Uh, this one is called Full Moon. Again, the same type of wax. It just says pumpkin and sandalwood. That is not what I would have imagined for the name full moon. Huh. I am smelling the sandalwood, but not a whole lot of pumpkin. But again, it could be the same thing where once we start burning the candle is where we will really start picking up the uh, the pumpkin fragrance. I mean, there's a little bit there. Actually, actually, I guess I'm smelling a little bit of a sandalwood and an almost pumpkin pie fragrance. I prefer the other fragrance only because I don't personally prefer pumpkin and sandalwood near as much as I like apples and, and uh, cinnamons and things like that. But that's just a personal preference. You can see that this has a slightly different color um, in the jar, the wax, uh, and that's probably from the fragrance oil. So this has a slightly or slight orange tint to it. And anytime you're not dyeing your candles, the, the fragrance oil can affect the color of the finished product just a little bit. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, um, that, but there is a slight difference in color between the two, which again is pretty common just based off the fragrance oil. One thing I wanna say on, on, on both of these so far is everything is easy to read on all of these except 
for the fine details. In this one, it's the, the note profiles, the note sense on the sample. It was uh, roughly the same thing. Uh, so I would, I would recommend increasing the font size of those a little bit and sticking with fonts that are very easy to read. I'm not sure what printer they're using and not all printers can get that detailed. So I would just work on a few things as far as the labeling goes. Uh, maybe decrease the size of your logo a little bit um, and that way you should get a little bit more room to uh, add more detail to some of this other text. That would be one suggestion potentially because you've got a large label so you should have plenty of room. Um, I think you're just losing most of the label with, with the big logo um, and a few other elements. So just stretch that out a little bit and, and see if you can get a little bit more detail back on the text. Very good job overall. I still prefer the rum cinnamon apple chestnut one myself. Okay, let's go ahead and get to these custom concrete tubs. I'm excited to check these out. Oh man, I can already tell I'm gonna like these. Oh wow. Holy cow. I, that's crazy. This is the same fragrance as uh, one of those before, the rum chestnut cinnamon apple. Uh, this one is a beeswax coconut wax. Oh, this is the 11 ounce candle. So I, I probably should take back some of the other information I said. Um, I, I may have just been misunderstanding or misreading the letter, but this is their 11 ounce candle, which makes the other candles probably accurate at 14 ounces. So that clears that up. Um, now let's talk a little bit more about this candle here. First of all, as I mentioned, it is a beeswax, coconut beeswax. Beeswax is a very firm, hard to burn wax, especially in containers. So you usually need something to soften it up. Coconut's a great choice. So a lot of people use coconut. Um, soy or a soft uh, paraffin wax. I've done a few tests of a beeswax coconut or beeswax soy candle, but not very many uh, as far as reviews on the channel. So I'm anxious to test that out. I think it's an excellent choice as far as branding goes, or like, I guess, fitting the theme of this candle uh, to, to go with that wax. So uh, if it works well, then it's a good choice. Let's talk about this crazy vessel here for a minute. Okay, so this is like a granite marble concrete. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but it's absolutely stunning. I think they're pouring these themselves. They're, they're well, I know they are. They said they were. This is insane. These are gorgeous. They are quite heavy, so shipping, I can't imagine, is very cheap. I'm assuming they use a lot of flat rate packaging. <laughs> At least I would. Uh, but these are gorgeous. Take another look at that, both sides. I mean, wow. Look at the detail and the colors. This is really, really, really neat. And then a gold plated top. Now let's take a look at the wicks here. Uh, the wicks were laying down a little bit, which is just from the result of packing and shipping them. But okay, so this one has the same fragrance according to this label as that other one, but it doesn't smell the same to me. No, I don't know what that fragrance is. Oh, I'm not, not real sure. It's almost kind of a tobacco, vanilla, cedar type of fragrance. I'm not really sure, but um, this is one of the most unique candles so far that I reviewed on this channel. I still can't get over this vessel. This is so unique and gorgeous. As you notice, it is a double wicked uh, candle. That's a, This is a large or very wide candle, so uh, I would expect that. Uh, I'll be curious if those two wicks do the job. I would have probably put the two wicks either a slightly closer together or maybe even went with three wicks that were a little bit lower size. But I'm just spitballing here. I haven't actually tested this candle. It might burn perfectly the way it is. I love the look of this candle. I'm excited to try this out. Great job. Let's. I, I, we need to look at this other one real quick. Um, it is the same type of candle, but uh, it's a different fragrance. And uh, of course, it's a different color. It's a different look. Awesome. Okay, so once again, another custom vessel here. Uh, this one is kind of a, more of a stone look. Man, these are just gorgeous. So great job on uh, the aesthetics here. I mean, this is these are beautiful. I'm jealous of these vessels. The only thing I'm not jealous of is is how much it's going to cost to ship these suckers. And I'm also really curious at what the price point is on these because I can only imagine uh, the, the cost and the time and the effort that goes into creating these candles. So. I hope you guys are doing well with them because they are stunning. It is the same beeswax coconut blend and the same wicks used in all of these uh, these different waxes. 
That's not something I see very often. Usually different work, wicks work better with different waxes, but because I don't even really know what these wicks are yet, I'm really curious on that. I'm also equally as curious on how well they perform in various waxes. So I can't wait to test these. I cannot wait to get started. I wish I could explain to you guys how heavy they are. It's like holding a couple of horseshoes. I mean, they are heavy. I'm gonna step away for really like a couple weeks and do some testing, but I'll be right back here in the video and let you know how the testing went. But before I forget to mention later in the video, let me know in the comment section what you think about these uh, custom vessels here. Uh, do you prefer the white? Do you prefer the black? Um, and let me know if any of you have also dabbled in making some of those custom vessels before, or if it's something you might consider in the future. Anyways, I will be right back and let you know how testing went. I'm really excited to get started on these. So thanks for sticking around this long and I'll see you here in just a second. Okay, so I have now had some time to test all of these candles from Goddess Scent Design. There were a several of these candles, so four of them, and they were pretty large, so it did take a little extra time to, to really be able to adequately test these. And in the rest of this video, we're gonna talk about my feedback after having a chance to test. There were a lot of things I really liked about these candles, and I have a few tips going forward as well. So we're gonna start off with those two taller jars, those standard Mason-style jars. I think they were 11 ounce candles, and they came in two different fragrances. So let's start with the fragrances first. Out of the two, my favorite was probably the one called Aries Lux. Um, it had a little bit of cinnamon and rum, that type of flavor, flavor, <laughs> uh, we're not eating these. Uh, that type of aroma, that type of fragrance, I liked much better than the, uh, the other one, which was a pumpkin sandalwood. I'm not a huge pumpkin fan and sandalwood, it really just depends on what it's combined with. So I definitely like the other one better. Oh, that was the one with the black label. Fragrance aside, what did I think about how these burn? They were both a little bit over wicked, but it's really tough with these types of candles to get the wicking right because they are so tall. You may think the wicking is right at the top and then in the middle they struggle and then the bottom they're too tall, or they might struggle at the beginning and then they end up too big later on. It just really, really depends on the type of wax you're using, but these taller jars can be a challenge to wick. So, what I saw with these is definitely not abnormal. So in no way do those results really reflect the candle maker's ability to wick these correctly or anything like that. These are just super tough to wick. It is very difficult to find a jar like that, that tall, that is wicked perfectly all the way top to bottom. I've struggled with this particular jar in the past, trying to get the right type of wick. And, and again, you'll see in some of this footage here that the flames got awfully large and a little too hot and we were getting much too deep of a melt pool this early in the burn of the candle. Now, there is kind of a misnomer out there, a little bit of a myth on reaching a full melt pool, um, you know, within a couple hours. That is really kind of more of a, a guideline. <laughs> there is no hard fast rules when it comes to candle making because there's no specific materials that all of us use across the board. There are so many different types of waxes and because of that, you can't have a uniform rule for how those waxes should behave. Some waxes are very, very soft and you will get a full melt pool quicker than ones that are harder. Uh, and those harder, more firmer waxes, you definitely need to make sure that you get a melt pool closer to the edge early on because it will be harder with those denser, firmer waxes with a higher melt point, it will be harder for those to catch up later on the jar. A soft wax, on the other hand, it might reach the edges quicker, but you really don't need it to because it is so soft, it will catch up later as the jar burns down or as the candle burns down in the jar. So every wax is different and they all have to be treated differently. So the reason I say that is they may have been just following that rule about getting a quarter to a half inch deep melt pool uh, wall to wall. So my suggestion here would be to work on the wicking a little bit. Wick it down for sure. I'm not entirely sure which wicks we're working with here. I would definitely go down probably two sizes at least to start with and then see how that goes. Now you will want to test that top to bottom to make sure that that wick size will work from start to finish. You may find that it burns perfectly at the top and then it struggles or changes the way it behaves and burns later on the jar. So your best bet with jars this tall where the wicking can seem to fluctuate as the candle burns, your best bet is to go with the best one overall. That means which one tends to burn the best, top, middle, and bottom. It is not easy with a jar like this to find one that's gonna burn perfectly all the way through. So your best option is to try to find the best one overall. My suggestion again would be to start with a couple of sizes smaller on these two jars and then go from there. See how the testing goes, see what other adjustments you might make. But I would certainly wick down on these because as the jar burned further and further down, in my 
in my experience with these tests, the wicks became larger and larger and hotter and hotter. But again, that was just from my experiences. You may have different results when you're test burning them, particularly if you're using different fragrances. But that is my general feedback on those two jars. But now let's get to these uh, concrete vessels, those tubs that I think you called them. They are absolutely stunning and gorgeous. And I think I said that way too many times, probably in the first part of the video. So I'm not gonna talk about that too much more. I'm gonna try not to. But as you'll see, even with these burning, they are just stunning. I can't imagine what it probably cost you to make those um, or cost to ship those because they are extremely heavy. But I cannot tell you, okay, I can because I've said it so many times. They are stunning, they're gorgeous. Now, how did these burn? Well, this one, these ones are more interesting. Uh, they are a long, wide jar. You went with two wicks, uh, which is not a bad choice. It's probably the most common choice here uh, to start with. And I'm assuming the way it burned, it seemed like the same type of wicks as the other jar. Now, this one was interesting because it really seemed like at first, both of these had a hard time getting a full melt pool, particularly because of the shape of the jar. Um, I think you were generating enough heat. I think the, the, the wick sizing was, was completely fine. What I would probably do is move the wicks a little bit closer together as one suggestion, if you're going to continue to double wick this. Move the wicks a little bit closer together. That would help you probably get a better complete melt pool early on and then allow you to maybe wick down one size on these jars. I know it sounds like I'm kind of contradicting myself if I'm saying that I had a hard time getting a full melt pool, um, but then you need to wick down. But there were two different reasons. It had a harder time at first to getting a full melt pool because the wicks were so far apart, it was leaving some in the middle. It did eventually catch up, but then once it caught up, the wicks seemed a little bit too large. So move your wicks closer together, maybe a half inch inside for each one. So bring them a total of one inch closer together and then wick down one size and see if you have good results still. Because overall, these did burn pretty good. Um, the hot throw was great, uh, really on almost all of these candles. But So the hot throw was good. There was nothing really wrong with this candle at all, and it burned fine. But as far as trying to make it even a little bit better, that would be my suggestion if you're double wicking this. If you're going to continue to use two wicks, move them together one inch total, so maybe a half inch on each one, um, and then wick down one size. And that was for both candles. However, if it was me, I think I would almost consider triple wicking this and going down a few sizes. The reason I like to add one more wick and then lower the sizes of all of them is you will get a more consistent even burn and you won't have wicks getting as big and generating mushrooms as much or getting as large of flames. Um, and generally you can even control the temperature better with three wicks. So three wicks, smaller sizes would give you a much smoother, cleaner, even burn and, provide, and prevent some of the problems that come with larger wicks. So give that a shot if you're interested in trying it as well. I have not used these jars, obviously, because you have made them, uh, but I haven't used any jars this size or shape. So I am just speculating with the triple wick idea, but I think, I think I might actually try that. You may not like it. You may not even like the look of it, but if you are looking to you know, continue testing and tweaking, it's worth taking a shot. But all in all, these two vessels were just stunning. So you said in your letter that you were trying with your candles to come up with something that was kind of your signature and something that you really, really loved and you had a hard time finding the vessels that you really, really loved and that is why you made your own. And you wanted these candles to be able to complement a room. You wanted them to fit in to some kind of aesthetic. If I can say you did an excellent job with these. These are among my favorite vessels I have ever seen. Um, for candles. So excellent job and excellent job overall. Just to recap some of my suggestions real quick, on the two taller 11 ounce jars, I would wick down two sizes, retest, and then continue to tweak from there if you need to. And then on the double wicked tubs, which were gorgeous, I would consider moving the wicks one inch closer together and then dropping the size by one size. Um, and you know, again, adjust from there or consider even trying triple wicking this with three sizes smaller and adjust from there. Thank you very much for sending in these candles. I really appreciate everyone that wants to do this. I'm, I'm starting to generate quite a stack of candles uh, that were sent to me for review. So thank you everyone who has sent in candles for being patient as I try to get to these. I try to do one of these reviews every week uh, and that is in addition to my other videos, other one or two videos I do a week. So thank you again for being patient as I work my way through them. And thank you one more time for you at the company is uh, Goddess Scent Design for sending these in. 
gorgeous work, great job overall. I appreciate you trusting me to provide you some of my own feedback and do some testing here and then relay that here on the channel. Tune in for future videos. Don't forget to check out some of these other videos on the channel and please subscribe and give this video a like if you haven't already. I appreciate you all and I will see you next time.